the world of computing we see today is where computing is not big machines in air-conditioned rooms with white-coated attendants. It's actually personal. We have computers in our hands and the people who brought that about, uh, two of the key players were Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, without a doubt. But the other key component is one of my heroes, who is not widely known to the general public, is a man named J.C.R. Licklider, who was a professor at MIT. And he had the vision for what became the Internet, about connecting computers and how important it was to have computers that you interacted with very easily and you could connect to different computers all over the planet. And that really, uh, with the personal computing, was a key element. And the last element, I think you have to give credit to Tim Berners-Lee and the World Wide Web. And that really made it possible for ordinary mortals without technical knowledge to go and search the whole world of computing for information, for connections and all sorts of things. So those were the three elements and I, I can't reduce it to, to just one. I think you need all three. It is very depressing um, to go into the cyber crimes unit at Microsoft and see on the wall uh, where all the viruses are. These are computers that have been taken over by uh, gangs of bad guys who have actually infiltrated your computer. They have their own software and uh, they can send out spam from your computer. They can steal your password, steal your identity. This is a really scary thing. and. Uh, it really is a constant battle of the good guys, the white hats, against the black hats, the bad guys. Um, so that, that's one level which affects us all. But the thing that we should really be worried about is, is cyber warfare on a grand scale. And the, the, the Americans and the Israelis invented a special type of computer worm, virus, if you like, which was capable of attacking a specific target, which was the centrifuges in the uranium processing plants in Iran. And, and by attacking this type of industrial control computer, um, they were able to knock out lots of the centrifuges and delay the Iranian program for probably a year or so. But the trouble is that that virus escaped into the wild and has been analysed and is essentially a blueprint for attacking cyber infrastructure. And that's actually something that's really scary and there are, these things are out there. And it, it's, it's really something that we have to be constantly vigilant about. So, yes, it, it is a scary future. Computers are getting smarter. The question is, will they get conscious? Uh, IBM made a machine called Watson, which beat Jeopardy! champions on television. And that's a very clever thing to do. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, there's a philosopher uh, called Searle at Berkeley, and he's very opposed to the idea that computers are conscious and can think. And so his comment on the fact that Watson won at Jeopardy says the computer Watson doesn't even know it was playing Jeopardy, let alone that it won. And, and yes, and you can see that if you ask it a question which it doesn't get the context right, it, it gives complete nonsense. So it isn't actually thinking, it's simulating intelligence. So the big question is, can computers actually really be conscious, aware, intelligent, can they do these things? And that's really the concept of strong AI is, is, is one of the things that's fascinated people for years and may now be one of the ones we can address. Predicting the future is difficult and, and uh, Alan Kay, one of the people who invented personal computing, said the best way of predicting the future is to invent it. But, but I think there are certain elements that you can clearly see. With Moore's law, things will get smaller, cameras will get smaller, computers will get smaller. So there'll be computers everywhere, there'll be cameras everywhere. And one of the, the scary things is, is about the Internet of Things. That there'll be computers all over the place, all interconnected, there'll be drones flying around and all these sort of things. Is, is the potential loss of privacy, the, the, the security concerns that you have about these things. Um, but I think these things will come to pass and we have to come to terms with them. And the law, the legal systems are, are struggling to keep up with the changes of technology. And so I think that it'll be a constant struggle. But I think that 
ubiquitous small computers which uh, uh, monitor every aspect of our lives will be available. How we use them, how we control them, how we monitor them is a real challenge for society. Mm -hmm.